talk about reloading a pistol and where I'm at uh, with my skills as far as reloading and my methods and why I chose that. So a lot of people will just pick a method because someone else says it does this or that without actually practicing and vetting it. Uh, you may find one method to work better than another or you may just stick with something to where you're so proficient it would just take too much training to go to something else. However, my, my, I think my story is a little bit interesting on how my, uh, my skill with uh, doing reloads um, <clears throat> and my method of doing, carrying out reloads uh, just ebbed and flowed throughout time and kind of where it's at now and why. So anyways, when I started out, I was using the slide release, uh, you know, military style for a lot of things. The bolt release on the uh, M16 and M4, I was using that. I didn't notice that I really needed to look for it, even under stress of combat. And when I was uh, trying as fat to reload as fast as I could, I never really did the slap or anything. I just tried it, and it didn't really work. But I always found that my thumb, you know, once I inserted the magazine, my thumb naturally rotated into position to hit the bolt release, or at least it was really close. It didn't take too much time. Definitely not as much time as uh, taking the charging handle and racking it, because it, it's not something that's so small and so hard to hit unless you're the one that likes to smack it. So there is a right and wrong uh, way to do it, and the wrong way, uh, you can practice a million times, uh, but practicing the wrong way isn't exactly going to help you, it's just going to make it a habit to do things the wrong way, right? So anyways, um, with reloading a pistol, uh, I started out using the slide release uh, for you know releasing it. However, I listened to uh, people that uh, haven't really spent much time in combat, or maybe they did, but they, it's kind of a hypocritical thing where they were learning to use the slide release and uh, they never had a problem with it. However, when they got into the civilian uh, training uh, area, or maybe they learned in law enforcement to use the slide release, they got into the civilian training uh, market and they thought, oh, this would be more efficient because it's harder to mess up or whatever because new shooters might have a problem with it. Or they operate under the theory that you're not going to be able to use this. It's just a fine motor skill. I find that incredibly hard to believe because I, I learned and it was kind of like a light bulb uh, that if that's a fine motor skill, finding your magazine is a fine motor skill, trigger pull is a fine motor skill, finding the magazine relates to do the reloads is a fine motor skill, doing malfunctions is a fine motor skill, especially the type threes. We jack the magazine, rack it and stuff like that, and we have to be cognizant of our repetitions on racking it. Uh, if you operate the safety deer in a reload, if you're one of those people, I, I'm not, uh, but if you're able to get that down, how is this a fine motor skill? It basically falls right into place and repetitions and force and stuff like that. You can even reload a Glock or a stock m and it, it doesn't really matter. Um, the other issue is that a lot of people feel that it's a wear, uh, a wear point. And that is true in some cases. I actually did wear out the uh, area on the slide where the slide stop um, meets the frame, uh, basically to where the, the gun didn't even lock back anymore because I was constantly sitting there whittling away. The slide stop did fine. Uh, but it did need to be replaced to give it a little bit more life, but it didn't really help it that much. So it, I, I guess it kind of depends on the metallurgy, how the pistol is designed, but this one is definitely designed uh, to be a slide release. Uh, of course, it's called a slide stop because it functionally it does stop the slide, but it can, always, uh, it can also release the slide um, by that means. Uh, is it evil to rack the slide? No, not, not really. It, it's just on a preference, but... I make it. I have a hard time believing the argument that it's a lot more efficient. It's going to stop malfunctions and stuff. So, anyways, <clears throat> uh, that's my feeling. I started racking the pistol and stuff like that to relieve the slide stop on my 1911, or uh, the area where the slide stop goes on the 1911, and that's why I stuck with it for so long. However, quite recently, I was putting myself under stress, and I spent years doing this, and I got really good at it. However, when push came to shove, I did something really weird. I actually was going for the slide release because it was just right there and it was like I was just applying pressure and I did, I had to think about uh, pulling it back because it was just more movement than I wanted to do. I wanted to make it more efficient. Coming out of the holster, I was just skipping it and it, I kind of did, you know, the bowling. But it's a lot more efficient than sitting there and doing it by the numbers and having very right angles on everything when I could have just 45 degree angled it and uh, got my pistol out there. 
So uh, that's something that Travis Haley talks about. So it's kind of interesting that I was naturally kind of doing that in other ways. But when it came to reloads, I was so stubborn and stuck and had my ego behind it. And ah, this is what happened, so don't do it. It's not universally true, so we kind of need to pull ourselves away from our egos and find out what's more efficient for us, of course, and depending on the weapon you're using, if I was still using that 1911, of course I would have to do that in order to keep things consistent, and even things like uh, um, the uh, Tavor, I found that after some time, and depending on the ammo, I wasn't actually... Uh, I, I was releasing the bolt before the magazine was even inserted, so I had to rack it anyway, so I just wanted to get in the habit of doing that. The other reason I was saying for uh, racking the slide is, hey, it's one thing that I have to do over and over again because if I have malfunctioned, I'm going to be racking the slide anyways. But depending on the situation, your brain's going to click into uh, certain things like this is how I do it, and you just do it instinctively without even needing to look at the gun. You lock it back, take out the magazine, rack it. You may drop the magazine and just reload it anyways. So it just depends on what you're doing, but I don't buy that that is a really good excuse because that's usually what a lot of new shooters uh, feel. They just want to start out and uh, they think that's more simple along the lines with uh, how you're not going to be able to do anything. But if you're learning any method, gross motor skills aren't going to help you or make things better. It's not really going to cut the learning curve or anything like that. Um, It'll just make things to where you stay can stay. You've chosen something to stay consistent with in training, but it doesn't make that more efficient when you come under stress. That's practice repetitions and stuff like that. So, anyways, um, it depends on how much you practice and how you practice. So, anyways, uh, some people talk about how you can miss the slide release. I I've basically never done that. I I do believe in what like Larry Vickers said, where he's just basically use your support hand. Some people say don't bother doing that, it wastes time. However, I find if uh, you're using your strong hand and you're trying to, you typically like to combine movements, we just naturally do, especially when we're gaining speed, we almost feel like we time things perfectly, kind of like recoil control, like if somebody uh, drops the hammer on, uh, on a dud, they go like, they do that. So if something goes wrong, we're basically getting ahead of ourselves in these steps. This doesn't mean, oh, we anticipated uh, this just means that he knows exactly how much to push forward. Uh, or maybe they do like this. They know exactly how much to push forward once the gun recoils to get right back on target. That's also a, a trait of somebody who's very well trained. Uh, depending on the weapon you're using and stuff like that. It, it typically happens. You get caught off guard doing that. It's not a mark of shame or something to laugh at <laughs> necessarily. I found that out the hard way. But anyways... Um, you you got to understand that this this method, I, I went back to uh, using the slide, uh, slide stop or slide release uh, because I found it was more efficient no matter what I was using. And some people say it's a wear point. Uh, you'll wear out the slide release. That may be the case, but what are they going to cost? Ten bucks? I mean, you spend more than that on a box of ammo and a lot of the other stuff, uh, you know, going out on a date or whatever. I mean... Uh, typically, a lot of people are like, well, why would I want to spend that money when I could save it for something else? You don't save it for something else. Uh, come on, we're guys, we're gun enthusiasts, we waste ammo. We waste, we waste money on things like ammo, accessories, and BS that we don't even need. So, it, take care of your gun. It's something you would probably want to buy anyways as parts to maintain your gun, so you'd waste money on all those other things. So instead of worrying about customizations and stuff like that, work on, uh, work on your skill and stuff like that first. And, you know, we'll talk about uh, modifications another time, but that's the way that I reload a pistol, basically. You know, when I'm out, boom to boom to boom, then I basically just get out the other magazine, and it's right there. Some other people might say, well, what if the slide doesn't lock back? Then obviously, I've never had an occasion, even when I was, um, even when I was uh, using the slide release method or going really fast, that I forgot. It's like, oh, I hit the slide release. It's like, okay, uh, basically, uh, or it was just lock, you know, forward while I was doing the reload because it just the magazine didn't lock it back. I never forgot to actually rack it and uh, as get into battery. It's kind of you got to spend time on what you do. Who cares about a consistent motion? So anyways, uh, 
I think that a lot of these arguments are are terrible, but it's not the case of you shouldn't be uh, you know racking it, but stop trying to spread it like a bunch of Jehovah's Witnesses going to door to door, spreading their theories and telling you why you're wrong and you know why you should go to their church, their church of power, uh, you know, uh, power racking the or racking the slide rather than using the slide release. So, anyways, let the people. Uh, learn for themselves, encourage them to practice both ways and decide for themselves. Consistency is everything, practice is everything, put yourself under stress, you're good to go. So anyway, so go ahead and put your comments below uh, and you guys have a good one.